Oh, hey there, geologists. B here. I'm at a local museum checking out their collection of rocks and minerals. There are so many kinds. But what exactly is a rock anyway? And how is it different from a mineral? And how do geologists organize all these rocks into groups? I have so many questions. Luckily, I know just who to ask for help. Are you ready, geologists? Let's get to digging. other me. I'm so excited to talk to you about minerals and rocks, one of my favorite topics. You can think of Earth's lithosphere, or surface, as one giant Lego construction, and minerals are the individual building blocks. A mineral is a naturally occurring solid made of atoms organized in a specific pattern. This atomic structure gives each mineral its unique properties, such as color, hardness, and crystal shape, kind of like different Lego pieces. There are thousands of minerals, ranging from the common salt on your kitchen table to the diamonds in a jeweler's shop. On the other hand, a rock is a naturally occurring solid that is made up of two or more kinds of minerals. For example, granite is a type of rock composed of the minerals quartz, feldspar, and mica. These minerals combine to form a rock with a unique appearance and properties. Varying combinations mean that there are thousands of different kinds of rocks as well. That's a lot to keep track of, right? So how do geologists possibly organize it all? Well, instead of focusing on what's in each rock, geologists group rocks based on how they are formed. There are three main kinds, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks. To get things rolling, I'm going to pass the torch to Fiona. She'll tell you all about igneous rocks. Hey there, geologists. Welcome back to Iceland. Before you ask, yes, I am still here, and that's because Iceland happens to be one of the best places in the world to study igneous rocks. The name igneous comes from the Latin word ignis, which means fire. Based on the name and what you already know about plate tectonics in Iceland, how do you think igneous rocks are formed? Pause and record your thoughts in your notes. Igneous rocks form when magma from Earth's mantle cools and hardens. When this happens beneath the Earth's surface, intrusive igneous rocks form. These rocks cool slowly, allowing large crystals to develop. A great example of this is granite, which you can find not only here in Iceland, but also in places like the Sierra Nevada mountains in California. Igneous rocks can also form above Earth's surface when magma erupts as lava, cooling quickly and forming extrusive igneous rocks. Because these rocks cool quickly, they have small crystals. Basalt, obsidian, and pumice are all common examples of extrusive igneous rocks found near volcanoes across the globe. Isn't geology fascinating? Next up, Helen will tell you all about sedimentary rocks. Hi, geologists, Helen here. I'm back at one of my favorite places, the Grand Canyon. It's full of amazing sedimentary rocks. Sediment refers to small particles of rock, minerals, and organic material. But, wouldn't that mean the Grand Canyon should just be a big pile of sand? Looks uh, pretty solid to me. So how does sediment become rock instead? If you've ever played with sand, you've probably noticed that when you press it together, it becomes firmer. 
Now, imagine that sand under immense pressure, like the weight of this giant canyon. Over millions of years, sedimentary rocks form when layers of sediment compress and cement together. Sedimentary rocks are often found in places where sediment collects, such as lake beds, river beds, and ocean floors. These environments allow layers of sediment to accumulate over time. You can see the distinct layers in the rock, each telling a story about the environment at the time they were deposited. For example, layers of sand usually cement together to form sandstone, which is common here in the Grand Canyon. Layers of mud can become shale, and layers with a lot of shells or coral can turn into limestone. This variety in sedimentary rocks is what makes places like the Grand Canyon so fascinating. It's like being able to read a really, really old and exciting story written in stone. Next up, Jenny's going to tell us all about metamorphic rocks. Hey there, geologists! Jenny here, exploring the beautiful Appalachian Mountains. I was just examining this butterfly and thinking about how it actually shares some similarities with the rocks around here. Now, you might be thinking, Jenny, what does a butterfly have to do with rocks? Well, a caterpillar undergoes metamorphosis, or a big transformation, to change into a butterfly. With this in mind, what do you think happens to metamorphic rocks when they form? Pause and record your thoughts in your notes. Metamorphic rocks are rocks that form when an existing rock completely changes and becomes a new rock. This occurs as a result of heat and pressure, which can actually change the chemical composition of the rock itself. Let me show you what I mean! This is marble, a type of metamorphic rock. Marble starts off as limestone, which is a sedimentary rock. When limestone is subjected to intense heat and pressure deep within the earth, it transforms into marble. Many metamorphic rocks can be found in regions that have experienced significant geological activity, such as subduction zones. The Appalachian Mountains are full of metamorphic rocks because these mountains were formed by the collision of tectonic plates millions of years ago. This collision created the necessary heat and pressure to transform existing rocks into new forms. Other common examples of metamorphic rocks include slate, which forms from shale, and schist, which forms from mudstone. Each metamorphic rock has its own unique story of transformation, telling us about the intense conditions it has endured. Isn't it fascinating how rocks can transform and tell us so much about Earth's past? All right, B, back to you. Wow, thanks team! I love learning more about different types of rocks. But why do we bother classifying them at all? How is it useful? Geologists, pause the video and record your thoughts in your notes. Classifying rocks helps uncover clues about Earth's past, present, and future. For instance, Igneous rocks can provide insights into past volcanic activity. Sedimentary rocks can reveal information about ancient lakes or seas. And metamorphic rocks help identify earthquake-prone regions. Altogether, this helps us understand Earth's history and gives us a heads up on future geological events, such as natural disasters. Classifying rocks also helps us locate valuable natural resources. Many rocks contain minerals, metals, and fossil fuels essential for daily life and technology. Bauxite, an aluminum ore, is found in sedimentary rocks, while igneous rocks often hold gold and platinum. 
Understanding these associations helps us extract resources efficiently, supporting industries and economies worldwide. Finally, understanding rocks helps us take better care of Earth itself. Just like doctors need to understand the human body to make informed medical decisions, we have to understand the anatomy of the Earth to make our own informed decisions about our planet. This includes decisions about resource management, environmental protection, and disaster preparedness, which help us ensure a sustainable future for this wonderful place we call home. Other me, do you maybe have a newfound appreciation for different types of rocks? Wow, I learned a lot today. Thanks, B. Let's make sure I've got it all. Minerals are the building blocks of the Earth's lithosphere, and a rock is made up of two or more minerals. The three kinds of rocks are igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks, and they are all formed by different environmental conditions. By studying them all, we can make more informed decisions about the planet we call home. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some more rocks to look at. Until next time, remember, this whole planet is one giant sculpture, and we all have a chisel, so don't underestimate the impact you can have. Stay observant, keep asking questions, and I'll see you next time. Hey, hey.